Hello, and welcome to another GEMDS training video. In this video, we will be covering the basic functionality of the firewall service on the Orbit MCR and then show how to configure it. The firewall service is used for the following functions. Blocking, dropping, and allowing traffic. Masquerading outgoing traffic. This is known as source NAT. Port forwarding, also known as destination NAT. And finally, one-to-one -one NAT, also known as static NAT. Port forwarding and one-to-one -one NAT are covered in different videos. By default, your Orbit MCR will come preloaded with four filters and one NAT rule. We will cover these in more detail in a minute. Each filter contains numerically identified rules. These rules are processed in numeric order. For example, rule one is processed first, then rule two, and so on. Each rule contains a match case and an action. The match case is a classifier which detects the traffic type that you are trying to perform the firewall action upon. You have three options for what action to take on the matched traffic. You can drop the traffic, block the traffic, or allow the traffic. The action you choose all depends on what you are trying to accomplish. After creating or modifying firewall filters, you will want to verify the correct filters are applied to the correct interface. On each interface, you must set an input firewall filter and an output firewall filter. We will cover this in a minute. Now that we have covered the basic concepts, let's take a look at the default firewall service configuration. For an easy way to view the entire firewall configuration at once, it is recommended to use the command line interface. After logging in, type configure to enter the configuration mode. Then type show services firewall and press enter. At the top, you can see there is an item called Address Set. This address set is called Local Nets and is used to declare any local subnets on the orbit. Note that if you change your local subnet on the orbit, you must update it here as well. Next, you will see the filter called In Trusted. By default, this is used as the input filter of the bridge. Note that by default, all local interfaces are contained within the bridge. This includes Wi-Fi, ETH1, ETH2, and or the NX interface. This effectively sets the input of the bridge interface as a trusted interface. After in trusted, you will see in untrusted. By default, this is used by the cell interface. The first rule in this filter tells the interface to allow pings. The second rule allows DNS requests. And finally, the last rule drops any other traffic that comes into the interface. Because the cell interface is a public facing interface, we are effectively saying that this is a public or untrusted interface. The next filter is the out trusted filter. Again, this is applied to the bridge interface by default and tells the bridge to allow any traffic out because it is a private trusted interface. The last filter is the out untrusted filter. This filter is set up to allow traffic out that originates only from the local net subnet. It may not be apparent, but it also allows any traffic that originates from the cell interface as well. This is because the add interface true flag is set. It automatically adds the applied interface's IP address to the source address match case. The last piece of the firewall is the NAT source rule. This rule is applied to the cell interface by default and causes any outgoing traffic to be masqueraded, much like your home router does. This is important because if you do not masquerade your outgoing traffic, the cell carrier may drop the cell connection due to a violation of their policies. Now that we have covered the default firewall rules, let's take a look at the bridge and cell interfaces. To look at the bridge configuration, simply type show interfaces interface bridge. As you can see, we have two filters applied, an input filter and an output filter. As mentioned earlier, these are in trusted and out trusted. Also note that there is no NAT rule here. We typically do not want to masquerade our internal traffic. Now let's look at the cell interface by typing show, interfaces, interface, cell. Again, we have two filters. In this case, we are using in untrusted and out untrusted. In addition, we have the source NAT rule applied to the cell interface. With the exception of interfaces, which are members of the bridge, it is important that you always have an input filter and an output filter on each interface. Let's look at an example where the user wishes to remove ETH1 from the bridge. To remove ETH1 from the bridge, you would type delete interfaces, interface, bridge, bridge settings, members, port, ETH1. 
but now that ETH1 is not a member of the bridge, in order to be able to pass traffic, we will need to apply firewall filters. To do this, we will type set interfaces interface ETH1 filter input in trusted output out trusted. Then to commit our changes, we will type commit and press enter. One thing that you will want to watch out for when configuring your firewall is improper use of the NOT function. The NOT function before a match case basically inverts the match. If traffic isn't flowing when you think it should, verify that you haven't mistakenly placed a NOT in your match case. Also note that when the firewall is disabled, you are not only allowing all traffic in and out of your orbit, you are also disabling source NAT, which can cause your cell carrier to drop your connection destination NAT, which will cause port forwarding to stop working, and your IPsec tunnels may no longer function. Therefore, it is never recommended to turn your firewall off. Thank you for watching another GEMDS training video. For more information, please visit our website at GEMDS.com.